Hello friends, uh, welcome to this webinar. I'm your host Piali and right now I have Sanjay Kumar with me. Most of us already know Sanjay. He is an accredited Kanban trainer, Kanban coaching professional and a certified professional agile coach as well. And today uh, Sanjay will tell us how can we effectively handle the scope changes in Scrum and also uh, what all additional options we can get in Kanban method. Interesting topic. Over to you, Sanjay. Thanks, Charlie. So I guess the, the topic here is managing scope changes, which is one of the key concern most people have uh, when they shift from waterfall to agile, uh, whether the shift to uh, Kanban or Scrum. And uh, most of the people, I think, they start their journey into agile with the uh, assumption that agile is equal to Scrum. So we will consider, we'll spend quite a bit of time in in discussing how, what kind of challenges you face in Scrum when uh, the product owner needs to bring, you know, he wants to make changes to the sprint scope. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's quickly move on to my introduction. Uh, some of you already know me. For others who, uh, with whom I, this is my first interaction, I'm an agile trainer and coach. I do training on different uh, topics. Uh, one is Lean Kanban certifications, KMP1, KMP2. Uh, plus, I also do Certified Agile Coach Program, which is from IC Agile. In addition to that, I do corporate training and coaching programs on Agile Scrum Kanban. Most of my coaching engagements have been on con uh, Kanban, a uh, little bit on Scrum. So I've, I've been experimenting with Agile, I would say, since 2006, so a little over 10 years. Uh, but the last five, six years have been more, you know, I would say more condensed experience on Agile. Uh, before I moved into this Agile uh, coaching and training profile about two and a half years back, I had about 15 plus years of software development experience. So actually I've seen, you know, different, uh, different companies, different industries. I've seen how products go from, you know, starting to the end. I've seen them happen. And I've seen them happen in waterfall as well as agile. And I've seen from close the benefits when you transition from uh, waterfall to agile. Uh, I'll share some of my learning throughout the session. Uh, let's move on. So the first, we'll start with the poll. There are actually three polls, one after the other. This is primarily to gauge the, the audience profile and maybe to suit my, my uh, session based on what kind of audience do we have. Uh, Piali, can you run the first poll? Yeah. I have launched the poll. Yeah, can you see the results, Sanjay? I have shared it. Yes, nine, nine, sixty-seven, four, and I'm not sure how to maximize that. Uh, so development is about nine percent, right? Yes. Uh, again, Testing is nine. Again, nine. Okay, so most of the people are Scrum masters or uh, the managers. Yeah. Yes, and I guess this is more suited for these guys only. So it's good that we have the right profile. Let's move on to the poll number two. Okay, that's interesting. Absolutely no changes come during sprint, which is 2%, uh, which is reality. Most, most of the cases we see some changes. Only a few minor changes to existing stories, 30%. So most okay. of the vote uh, for the changes, like uh, the PO brings changes in each sprint. Right, around 70% of people see significant um, size of change during sprint. That's good. That makes uh, this webinar all the more relevant. Uh, let's move on to poll number three now. Okay. Just a second. So poll number three is about uh, how do you deal with changes right now? Here is the poll result. Okay, so Interesting to see very few people uh, have a strict policy of no changes. I've seen that a lot from agile coaches, but looks like in reality, you know, uh, uh, there's such a policy. Uh, either people find it irrelevant or it, it does not find any any uh, takers. And then we have accept small changes, but no new stories. It's good. Accept changes and new stories only if they are small enough. Accept changes and new stories only if they are urgent enough. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, let's move on with the with the session. So first, we'll talk about how to handle requirement changes in Scrum. Uh, I think we should spend about 25 
to 30 minutes on this one and then the last 10 minutes roughly we'll spend on Kanban uh, that should leave us about 10 minutes for uh, question and answer in the end so let's understand the context uh, so we're talking about requirements that come directly into the sprint so this picture shows this arrow the red arrow that is directly coming from backlog so this is the change that was not identified or a requirement which was not identified when the team was doing sprint planning. Uh, this has come for different reasons. We will not go into the reasons yet. Now, in most of the cases, I've seen agile coaches or scrum master, they try to take one of these two stands. Number one is uh, freeze sprint scope. That means absolutely no changes uh, once the sprint starts. Now, they might feel like taking this approach, even though it mean you know the management or PO may not agree to that. But many people feel that this is the ideal approach that freeze sprint scope, take no changes one once the sprint starts. And the primary rationale for that is we should avoid, we should protect the team from disruptions. Uh, so we have the maximum productivity and the best quality from teams. The other people, set of people. Uh, on the other extreme, uh, they say that we should always adapt to incoming changes. Uh, their, their rationale is we should maximize value for business. Uh, I think the line got uh, truncated here. Uh, the key thing was uh, to maximize value for business, we should allow for changes. And if you go further into the second kind of people uh, who recommend that we should allow changes during sprint, the rationale is, number one, the fourth value of Agile manifesto, which says responding to change over following the plan. And the second reasoning is one of the principle in Agile manifesto, which says welcome changing requirements, even late in development. Now, of course, this is an idealistic approach. In reality, it, it will definitely cause some kind of disruption. Uh, but we're just thinking the the reason why some of the agile coaches or agile experts they favor an approach where you at least welcome the the changes coming into the sprint and the third reason of supporting uh, uh, the idea of changes allowing changes in the sprint is that story must be invest where n is negotiable so the story always remains negotiable uh, if we find something new, some new requirement, even late in development, you should take it because the focus is to maximize business value, even at the cost of maybe um, disruption to the team. Now, this is being the ideal approach in the mind of agile coaches or people who, if they purely go by the text of agile manifesto, but the reality is the team does not usually like it. And they have valid reasons. Let's look at the reasons of the team, why they do not like these changes. Number one could be the team is new to Agile and they are yet to get into the rhythm of you know, the sprint. A team that is coming from waterfall, just getting to the idea or the flow or the rhythm of the sprint itself takes a lot of time. And at such a, at a, such a stage where they're adapting to the new discipline, if you have extra disruption in the form of changes, it, it really de uh, you know, demoralizes them. And in general, even if the team is not that new, they have been in Agile to you know, say six months to one year, still a change is usually a disruption. I mean, smaller disruption or bigger disruption would depend on when is the change coming and what is the size of the change. But typically a change, if it's of significant size, it slows the team down because it requires some planning and uh, replanning. And because of that, and because of the replanning effort, uh, the changes add to the cost of development. Imagine a, a developer who was working on a story which was pulled, uh, which was, you know, which was part of the scope during sprint planning. And the developer started working on the story on let's say day, day of first or two, first or second. And on day three or four, a product owner comes and says, you know, don't work on the story, work on this new story. Uh, the developer might may not mind working on the new story, but the reality is whatever effort he spent on story number one, that effort is sort of wasted, at least for this sprint. It will not add to the velocity, All right? Uh, 
and if that no amount of disruptions are significant enough it pushes the the work towards the end of the sprint which makes that which makes the 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 last few days really, really stressful for the team i've seen that happen a lot and of course it has an impact on velocity as we discussed during the the changes uh, they add cost to the team uh, to the development so we discussed two approaches one was absolutely no changes and the second approach was let all changes flow in to maximize business value now we'll discuss the the third option uh, the third option is you can say we are in the zone of that gray it's not black and white we are in the zone of gray and that option is let's see basically we negotiate and who needs to negotiate we need to have a negotiation between the dev team and the product owner on one side you have po's concerns on the other side other side you have team's concerns so the negotiation should be to balance out those two concerns and reach the, the decision that both sides agree with but to me it sounds very fair that you know you are not just overriding one person's concerns by the other person's concerns if we always allow changes to come in basically what you're saying is po's concerns are more important than the team's concerns whereas if we say no changes at all that is a case we are saying the team concerns of you know avoiding disruption or maximizing productivity and quality is more important than the po's concern of maximizing value and usually the scrum master should be the person who negotiates uh, at least until the team has reached a state of maturity where they can themselves carry on this negotiation with the product owner so negotiation for balancing two different priorities as we discussed i'll allow a few seconds to for you guys to quickly go through this on one side we have the business focus which is run by the product owner on the other side we have the team's focus all right so when you have the negotiation happening between product owner and the team there are some guidelines how to run this that negotiation the first thing is what is the value and the urgency of change how significant how valuable is that change is it just because product owner is in the habit of you know bringing in changes and expecting the team to do it accept changes all the time or is there some real business value and that also relates to point number 2 what is the source of change is the change coming from customer or has the change at least been verified with the customer in terms of business value we have seen a lot in a lot of cases where the product owner or the business analyst they did not spend enough time in understanding or or refining requirements uh, they take it easy before before the sprint starts and while the sprint is in progress they suddenly you know they start thinking about it they start you know uh, evaluating uh, different pros and cons they come up with changes so those changes we have to maybe look at that you know we we need to probably revisit in retrospective and see how we could avoid those kind of changes which are mainly because of uh, lack of proper value discovery uh, the third point is the change you have to evaluate in terms of what is the size of change and what is the timing of change for example if the size of change is just a little bit of change in acceptance criteria let's say modifying the acceptance criteria or adding a new acceptance criteria in one of the story it's small enough that the team might find it okay to you know finish in the same sprint the other concern is uh, the timing of change is the change coming on day 2 of the sprint or day 5 of the sprint or day 8 or 9 of the sprint if the change is coming on day 8 of the sprint even if the change is small a small change in the acceptance criteria it might still be very difficult for the team to finish it without any additional impact so overall we have to see how is the the impact of the change on the entire sprint goal if there is a significant impact we have to avoid that and in extreme cases we you know the team may recommend that the product owner to cancel the sprint if things have changed too much now once the team practices this policy of nego nego negotiating uh, change with the product owner with time it may happen that you know uh, the team uh, 
may may evolve the you know a, a policy might take shape uh, which sort of guides the team about what kind of changes are allowed what kind of changes are not allowed now this is not I would say a recommended policy which I'm listing here I'm just just an example of what the team might come to after let's say five six months of you know running uh, scrum uh, it's just a sample policy uh, so the policy of the team an example could be the change they accept change only when it has been confirmed with the customer they accept change only when the change aligns well with the value proposition of a story in the sprint meaning you're not drastically changing the story itself uh, you're just adding some you know changing the, the acceptance criteria a little bit not too much the third the key thing is the dev team feels the confident the feels conf the team uh, sorry the dev team feels confident that the change is small enough to be delivered within the sprint meaning it does not have a significant impact on other stories so this could be again an example of what kind of policy a team might come up with after you know months of negotiation with the product owner uh, and in cases where the, where the change happens to be significant enough in terms of uh, size of change, uh, the team may decide to estimate the change separately, assign a few story points. They might assign a few story points even if the change is part of an existing story. Even though they do it as a part of the existing story, they might still add some story points to the new chain that is coming. This is primarily to give credit to the team that they are doing more than than what they committed for when the sprint planning was happening. Uh, in some cases, there's, the team should keep an option of pulling out an existing story if the new change, a new story that is coming in is significantly, you know, if, is of significant size. And in all cases, I would say the team should make the product owner and the, the business aware that there could be a drop in velocity, there could be. I'm not saying that there should always be a drop, but uh, it's a possible risk. And the later in the sprint a change is, you know, uh, uh, comes in, uh, the more are the chances that there could be a, a drop in velocity. And I would say as, as a responsible her team member, uh, if you see a concern that there could be an impact on velocity, you should let the product owner know right in the beginning. So it does not come as a surprise in the end. So, handling requirement changes in Kanban method. I've written Kanban method, not Kanban. Uh, because if you're talking about Kanban in IT industry, I, was, I, I would say you should talk about Kanban method. Uh, if you're not talking about Kanban method, then people are generally holding on to a, a low maturity uh, definition of Kanban. Now, as most of you must be aware that there's, in Kanban, there is no, no sprints. There is a continuous flow of work. And mainly because of the continuous flow of work, uh, what happens is there's no deadline on a batch of items like it is in Scrum. So Kanban is more flexible to accepting change. Now that being said, I would, I would really warn teams against a policy where you accept all the changes all the time without any discipline. So I would say that a team needs to have, still have a discipline of uh, you know how or when to allow changes within inside the inside the system inside your kanban system now to compare how change works in kanban compared to scrum let me take an example of very similar example on on scrum first then then we'll see exactly same example on on kanban so assume a team which has a velocity of about five stories. Now you could assume the five stories add up to about 20, 25 points, but let's say roughly about five mid-sized stories. That's their velocity for a two week sprint. Now on Monday morning, what the team would do is they would pull five stories from the backlog. So what you see over here ready, uh, this is more like the sprint scope you can say. Now, this is the status as on Monday morning, right after your sprint planning. Your entire flow is empty. There's nothing in the flow because you're starting a fresh batch of five stories. Now, let's say the team follows this normal pace of work. By Thursday afternoon, Thursday midday, there are good chances 
the situation could be very similar to what we have right now where let's say one story has gone to testing in some cases it could be two stories have gone to testing but very rarely because it's only the fourth day uh, and there could be the other four stories could be in progress in cases where the scrum team is uh, mature enough they might put a web limit on number of stories so they may pull only three not four but I'm talking about most of the teams. I would say more than 60, 70 percent of the team, uh, where the situation could be more like, you know, you have four stories pulled in. Now, if a product owner comes with a new story on Thursday afternoon and asks the team whether they can accept this change or not, as we discussed uh, before, that you know, uh, the, it should be a negotiation between the team and the, the product owner whether the change should come in or not. Now, along those lines, let's say uh, a very reasonable question the team might ask the product owner uh, would be, can it wait, can this new story wait until the next sprint? Now, the product owner does the calculation that today is Thursday, so seven days before the end of the sprint, and then the team would pick up this new story in the next sprint, and then they would get it ready you know, for demo in the next sprint, so that, that makes a total of seven days in this sprint plus 10 days in the next sprint. Product owner sees that this story will be done approximately after 17 days. And let's say the story is urgent enough that he doesn't like this idea of waiting for 17 days. So product owner might say, you know, I think it's urgent enough, you should pick up the story in this sprint only. In that case, the next logical question for the team could be, can we take something? Can we take something out from the current sprint? Because if you pull the story in, there are chances we may not be able to finish all the six stories, five old plus one new. And a reasonable negotiation would be, you know, you put pushing something in, please take something out. And let's say the product owner decides to pull this story in, and let's say this particular story, he feels now that this is not that important, he takes this out. Right. Now, this is a reasonable enough compromise, and I would say it's a very mature situation where the product owner is okay with, uh, and the management is also okay with pulling something out. But even in this case, there are good chances the team will not feel good about it. The reason is the person who was working on the story, let's say person A, this person has already worked on the story for two, three days, and this person feels this, the, his effort has gone to waste, whatever he spent for two, three days. It's a little bit of demoralizing act. Even though this is more like a mature decision of you know having a, a reasonable compromise with the product owner. Now let's see how this kind of situation exactly goes in Kanban method. Now Kanban method, because we do not have a, a batch flow, it's more like a continuous flow. So on my morning, you might still have some items which are already in, in progress. Still, you want to replenish some items in the ready queue uh, to make sure people have enough work for the entire week. And in in Kanban method, there is something called replenishment, replenishment meeting, which is very similar to, you can say, a uh, sprint planning meeting. Uh, the difference is you're focusing on this one week only. So replenish meeting, Replenishment meeting would usually happen once per week. And let's take the case where it's happening on Monday morning. So your focus would be to pull in enough items in the ready queue so the team does not starve for work. Now we took the case of the team velocity being about five stories per sprint, which makes it about two and a half stories per week. We keep a little bit extra space in the ready column or input queue. So in case a team works at a faster pace, they still have work to be pulled from the ready queue. So that's why we have kept a, a size of about four stories here, meaning every Monday morning, the team puts four items over here. So, that, so they have enough work for the, for the entire week, a situation like this. So by, by the end of replenishment meeting, that could go on for about one hour, let's say, assuming you are first doing grooming of each story and then uh, uh, you know, putting them in in their input queue. So this is situation on Monday morning, and we move on to Thursday afternoon. 
Now, there are good chances by Thursday afternoon, which is about three days later, the team might have pulled two stories from here, right? Actually, the, the stories got pulled from the top. So the two stories got pulled from the top, and the, the third and fourth story got pulled up, and the entire stories flow to the right. So imagine this is the situation on, on Thursday afternoon. Now, if the product owner comes with a new story and asks the question, can you take this story? The key thing to note here is the decision criteria of whether to accept a new story or not is different from Kanban uh, and from Scrum. In Scrum, your focus is if we take the story, can we do everything by the end of the sprint deadline, by the end of the sprint or not? Because you have a batch and you have to finish the entire batch. In Kanban, you do not have a batch. So here, the decision-making criteria is this. This whip limit of four. So the team will look at how many items we have. There are already four, uh, two items here. And there is already a space for two items. So it's, it's no-brainer for the dev team. And actually, in many cases, the PO will just say, I'm putting a story in the queue. Please take it when you have time. So it's easy enough. This is the first option, easiest option, where the product owner, or you call it service request manager, this person comes and places the story at the bottom of the ready queue if there is a space. First option, put in the ready column at the bottom. Now, product owner may have a concern that if I put it at the bottom, then the team will pick this story. The, the sequence of this story will be third, first, second, and third. If product owner feels that this is higher priority, it should be picked up first, then that is the second option we have, that product owner may decide to put this right on the top. So as soon as the development team has capacity, they can pull in this story as the first option. <clears throat> so we discussed two options for now. Number one, put at the bottom of the ready queue. The second is put at the top of the ready queue. What if the product owner feels that, you know, it's still a little bit more urgent. They will pick it up first whenever they have capacity, but I want the story to move faster through the flow. Let's say the product owner is bringing this story on Thursday and he wants this story to be done by next Wednesday or next Friday, within five to seven days. Kanban method gives you another option. There's something called class of service. So class of service is not, but uh, you can say prioritizing or categorizing the number of items into different, different uh, uh, categories of urgency, so to speak. So fixed rate is one, one such uh, level of urgency, which is more than a standard item. It usually has a due date specified on the item. And in many cases, you could use color coding if you have physical board or even some uh, electronic boards allow that thing. You would have a due date, and and the color use does the visualization part where the team looks at the card and they know exactly that this item must be treated at a at a higher uh, level of urgency, and it should flow a little bit faster than the rest of the items, uh, the standard item. So in short. This fixed item not only gets a priority in the ready column, but it also gets the priority throughout the flow, and it flows faster than standard items. So this is option number three. What if the change that the, that the request manager or product owner bringing in, it's so urgent that he doesn't care about anything, any other story. He wants the story to be done right now without any further delay. For that, we have another class of service, which is, you can say, the highest class of service, which is called Expedite. You make it an Expedite, and the team picks up this item, even if they have to leave their current item immediately. And it flows really, really fast through the entire flow. Uh, think of your, you know, uh, uh, seven defects, P1 defects, server is down client is losing money. So anything which is so urgent as you, there is a loss happening right now, there's a huge risk to the organization or the customer, those kind of changes could go into expedite. 
Now, care must be taken that this expedite thing is not misused. And many teams, they follow policy of not more than one expedite at any given time on the entire board. And they also have another kind of a limit where they say not more than X number of expedites in a week. Uh, just to make sure this option of expedite is it does not get you know uh, misused by the customer because there could be a case where the customers or you know business says let's put 70 or 80 percent of the tickets in expedite so it flows faster it doesn't work that way number of expedite items should be very minimal not more than five to ten percent to have a you know good meaning of it all right so let's review quickly uh, we still have about 20 minutes so i'll quickly do a summary so that should leave enough questions, enough time for answering questions in the end. So the option we discussed for Scrum, a more mature way of dealing with uh, uh, requirement changes during Sprint is, key thing is it should be in negotiation with, between product owner and the dev team. And the Scrum master should try to facilitate that negotiation. Uh, the negotiation will be based on the value and urgency of change. Size of, of the change, of course. Is it just a requirement, uh, a change in acceptance criteria of a story, or it is a completely new story? Uh, the third is the timing of change. Is the change coming on day two, day five, or day eight? And in general, how you, uh, what kind of negotiation you have? Uh, a key factor is what is the overall impact on the sprint goal? So this is the consideration to, of how to deal with the change uh, in case of Scrum. In case of Kanban, uh, we discussed four options that we have. So Kanban almost, you can say, always allows for change to come in. Uh, first option is put it in the ready queue at the bottom. Second option is put the change, the new uh, story in the ready input queue at the top. The third is use fixed date item with a, fix, with a due date mentioned on it. So it gets higher priority uh, than other standard items. And number fourth is uh, put the change as an expedite item in the flow. All right, so these are the four different options. I'll leave the screen here and uh, quickly check if we have any questions. Uh, yes, we do have a few questions. Just... Uh, can I see it here? Yes, I'm uh, assigning the question to you. Okay. Let me know if you can see. Can you see the question? Uh, yes. Give me a second. I see only one. Uh, yeah, one by one only I'm assigning. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah. So how the velocity will be measured on Kanban? Uh, so velocity, if you see in, in Scrum, is much work you can do in a time frame, which is two weeks. The idea is very similar. The word we use is different. We call it throughput, but the idea is very similar. How many stories do you do in a week? So the time frame changes from two weeks to one week, but a common uh, definition is per week uh, for development projects. But if you have a support project where you have a very fast pace of, you know, fast flow of work, uh, you could use it per day also, like number of tickets completed per day. Right, so basically, it's number per uh, per time period. Uh, you could just use number of items. In some cases, I've seen development team they also use who use story points. They might calculate their throughput in story points per week. Yeah, Piali, we will go on to the next one. Yes, just a second. Is there a possibility that we can swap a story which is already in progress? So basically shelf the code of the story which is in progress and pull up the new story which can still fit in the scope of sprint. So we discussed that option. Uh, that's definitely an option. So first, the first question you'll ask the product owner. Uh, let me go back to the screen. Yeah, so this option we discussed for Scrum. So the second case we discussed was if if the product owner cannot wait, he really, really wants to push the story in. A reasonable question to ask the product owner is, can you take something out, right? 
And if the product owner is ready to take something out, that's definitely a valid option. Uh, the point I was making is even if you take something out and somebody has worked on that story, they feel a little demotivated that their work, the effort they spent for, you know, on that story for a day or two, that is going to waste because it will not add, add to this particular uh, uh, sprint. I hope that clarifies the question. I'll move on to the third one. Is Scrum best suited for dev projects and Kanban for maintenance projects? I, I, I'm I sorry, but I really hate that question. Uh, or there's a huge misconception about Kanban. Now, the reality is Kanban works well for maintenance projects and Scrum is not well suited for maintenance project. But that does not mean that Kanban cannot be used for development projects. Most of my coaching engagements in the last one year, they have been on using Kanban for development projects. Actually, even right now, I'm, I'm helping one of the startup uh, company to transition from their ad hoc process, which was, which was sort of, uh, I would say, uh, improper version of Scrum. Because, you know, in in startups, the pace of work is, you know, the flow of work is too fast. And Scrum finds it difficult to manage those changes in sprint scope all the time. So they were using some some poor version of Scrum. Now I'm helping them transition to Kanban. So in short, yes, Kanban can be used for maintenance projects as well as development projects. You need to know uh, enough about Kanban method. I would really, really emphasize that if you want to learn about more about Kanban, uh, please explore Kanban method. Uh, you can either go for David Anderson's book on Kanban or uh, you could attend a training which is KMP1. Kanban Management Professional 1, which is also called Kanban System Design. So go for KMP1 uh, 2D training. Uh, I do conduct that in, in uh, Chennai, Bangalore, and uh, Hyderabad. Uh, so you can look at Eisenberg schedule. You can find the training. Or if you are in some other location, please go to leankanban.com, uh, Lean Kanban uh, site, and you should be able to find a training in your area. Let's move on. Uh, Sanjay, if Scrum Master is not available, then who can negotiate with PO? So now I would say it's more of a discipline thing, which you know, Scrum Master helps the team to get into the habit of negotiation, and he also has PO in, in the habit of getting uh, going into negotiation with the team rather than always pushing the change. If the Scrum Master has been doing a good enough job, if one particular day the Scrum Master is not there, then I think the team should be able to handle that. Uh, if the Scrum Master has done a good job, I'm saying, if he has been, you know, he has uh, made the team and the product owner uh, experience how the negotiation should carry on. So he should not be a bottleneck, I would, I would, I would say. Uh, the next question, is there a sprint in Kanban? No, there is not. There's simply no sprint in Kanban. The Kanban believes in continuous flow of work, not a batch flow of work. Next question, do we also scope a story in Kanban before putting it in queue somewhere? Scope a story, I'm not getting the question. Uh, I think maybe you're talking about the time frame. So in, in Kanban, it's, it's, it works on the basis of the cycle time. And cycle time is the time from the moment you commit to a story to when you deliver the story or you're done with the story. So that's approximate cycle time. Uh, but Kanban believes that there's a variability in knowledge work. So if on an average a story takes about, let's say, five to seven days to to get out of the flow, uh, it's fine if, a, if one particular complex story ends up taking 10 days. And while the variability should be minimized, you do, you do not really you know uh, hate or say, you know, it should never exceed the estimate. So in short, uh, you do not need to put an end date or a due date on each and every story. That will defeat the purpose. The fixed date or due date item should be limited. Moving on. Is it advisable to use Scrumban for any kind of project or for what kind of project some run can be used? Now, Scrumban is a very confusing term for some people. Uh, the reason is there is no one single definition of Scrumban. 
I've seen some people who use a Scrumban version, which uses sprints. So you have the sprint from Scrum, but use minimal amount of Kanban. The, the version I like about Scrumban is the one where you do not have sprints. And I've written a, an article on my LinkedIn profile, which has good, got very good feedback from people. So if you get a moment, please take a look at that. I talk about Scrumban, which has no sprints. And yes, just like Kanban method, it can be used for uh, development projects. How to assure product quality in Kanban? Well, Kanban, Kanban is not will not tell you uh, how to code, uh, but it has other ways of uh, improving quality. One example is because it believes in continuous flow of work, it focuses a lot on faster feedback cycle. And that faster feedback cycle not only comes from QA, it also comes from UAT because it makes it clearly visible when an item is available for QA or UAT person to start looking at, right? Because of its visualization, rich visualization, uh, it clearly makes it visible that item is ready for next level of feedback. So that is one way where it, it helps improve the product quality. Uh, the second thing is, again, that's not specific to Kanban, but I've, whichever team I've worked with uh, on, on, you know, uh, for dev projects, I've used Kanban. I've seen one practice that helps a lot. The practice is the developer and tester, they sit together before the developer starts working on the story. And that's sitting together for 15 to 30 minutes. It gives an opportunity to have a common uh, context or a common understanding of the story. It really, really helps bring down the defects. In one particular case, I saw a team uh, bring down the number of defects from 700 to 350 from one quarter release to the next quarter release. And this was one of the key changes that they, they implemented uh, uh, in their system where the developer and QA, they used to sit together, understand the story together to it, so they have the common understanding. Moving on to the question by Prashant. Can you explain quickly how the project could be, would be managed end to end through Scrum? Uh, I think I might run out of time if I start explaining that. Uh, now, just like Scrum, Kanban is also about project execution. It does not talk about what happens before you get the project, like contracting and all those stuff. But if you're talking about purely the, the execution part, you would have, just like Scrum, you would have a bunch of stories. Uh, whatever stories you have in the backlog, you do not need to elaborate all the stories. You do not need to design all the stories. You do not need to commit on all the stories. So in terms of how requirements are understood or prioritized, it's exactly the same in Scrum and Kanban. The only difference you have in Kanban from Scrum is instead of creating multiple batches for two weeks, you let the con let the stories go through a continuous flow. That's the only difference, key difference here. And because of that continuous flow of work, Kanban has some new metrics, I, and I, I personally feel they're really powerful metrics, like community flow diagram, lead time distribution, and control chart. Now, they give you a very clear picture of if the team or the pace of development, is it improving or it is going down or which are the, which kind of items are taking more time in the flow, what do you need to work on that? So it really triggers a lot of, you know, uh, a Kaizen discussions, continuous improvement discussions. Next question from Venkatesh P. Is it recommended to switch Scrum and Kanban in the project? Now, what I understand from this question is, uh, I think talking about switch means, so one answer, uh, one question could be combine Scrum and Kanban, which I already explained. The other is switching from Scrum to Kanban or Kanban to Scrum. I would say if the team knows, understands Scrum and Kanban both, or at least the team lead or agile coach understands both of them, and he sees, he has a clear value proposition of what you what the team would benefit if they switch from Scrum to Kanban or the other way around, I would say it could definitely be tried. I would not give a, a, a ready-made answer that you must always do this or that. It has to be driven by value. 
Next question by Ajay Yadav. Can you share in what scenario development team should transition from Scrum to Kanban in context to what you just mentioned? So the teams have worked. Now, I'm not saying that's the only case, but typically the scenario which I've worked with multiple teams is the Scrum teams had low maturity and there was a fast pace of work. So the team did not have an opportunity to take six months to mature the adoption of a framework. Now, Kahneman believes in evolutionary change. In multiple teams, I've seen the team started doing Scrum, but they were somehow not able to mature. It could be possibly because of lack of guidance on Scrum, but they were not able to mature to a more mature uh, you know, Scrum team. And they had this disrupted flow where they, where they were either not able to finish all the stories or let's say they were not able to handle the the fast pace of requirement changes. So wherever you have, I would say some dissatisfaction and keep dissatisfaction from Scrum, then I would say you can definitely explore Kanban because it's more adaptable and more flexible uh, approach to, to doing the project. If you're happy with Scrum, I would say stay there. I mean, you don't need to necessarily change to Kanban. You should, it should, your decision should be driven by some, some uh, value proposition. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, I think this probably is going to be the last question. Uh, yes. What are considered the, the end time? Yes. What are considered to good design practices for development in Kanban? I would really keep it separate. Design practices doesn't have much to do with Kanban. Whatever XP practices you have, which help you write better code, they all can be utilized in Kanban. And I would say in many cases, most of these practices, the XP practices, they can be even used for, for waterfall project. It's just that uh, they, the team needs uh, some level of maturity before they go into XP. So I have not seen a waterfall team trying XP practices, but a Scrum or a Kanban team, both would benefit a lot from uh, XP practices. Uh, really that ends the from my side. I'll just share the the calendar that I have. Uh, yes, sure, please. So this is my details. Uh, mainly the LinkedIn profile you can check. Uh, just note that it's S U N J Y Kumar, not S A N J Y. So if you go to my LinkedIn profile, uh, you should be able to find uh, lots of blogs on Kanban and there's one on Scrumban and there are a few on Scrum also. Uh, take a look at them and if you have any question, please drop me a message on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to respond to you in a timely manner. And these are the upcoming trainings. Uh, I have one coming in Hyderabad. It's actually starting day after tomorrow. So it might be pretty short notice for most of you. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, certified agile coach. And then I have a bunch of trainings coming up in Bangalore. One of them is on uh, Kanban, KMP1, December 9th and 10th, and which is Saturday and Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, we have uh, KMP2. I rarely do a four-day program. This is my first one, uh, which is you know KMP1 and KMP2 right after one another. So see if you can, if you want to learn more about Kanban, I would say if you just do KMP1, it should be good enough for you to get started with Kanban. KMP2 you can probably do after three to six months once you have gained some experience in KMP1. And then I also have a certified agile coach in this in, in Bangalore happening on December 22nd, 24th, again from Friday to Sunday. Kelly, that's all I had. Back to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Sanjay, for your time. And uh, thank you, friends, for joining us. As uh, Sanjay mentioned, uh, he uh, keep doing the KMP1, KMP2 and uh, Agile coaching sessions in uh, different cities. And yes, uh, December 9th and 10th only we do have the KMP1 uh, program in Bangalore itself. You can check all the details in the training section of eisenbridge.com. And uh, regarding this session, we will be sharing the recording and all the SEO details in next two, three days in our discussion forum because we need to take care of some editing and other things of the video. Uh, once it is up, we will uh, email you 
uh, whoever is joining us they can have the recording and uh, you can claim one seu under category a from this session another thing i would like to share with you uh, the annual conference of discuss agile network is uh, scheduled on december 15th and 16th in bangalore www.discussagile.com that's the website you can check all the details it's a two days conference and a multi theme conference we have uh, tracks on coaching and leadership kanban hybrid agile and personal agility as well so i'm hoping to see many of you in the conference let's see so that's all from our side thanks once again for joining and uh, thank you sanjay thanks pelly and, and thank you all for joining uh have a uh, have a good night bye yeah good night bye